how do you pass the mathematics subtest of the elementary education K through six exam? What are the big concepts you need to know? Do you know them? My name's Scott Roselle, and in this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly what's on the mathematics subtest of the K through six exam and the big concepts you have to know to pass it. So how do I know? Well, I'm the founder of 240 Tutoring, and at 240 Tutoring, we make the best study guides for the FTCE exam and we've analyzed the exact concepts most likely to appear on the mathematics subtest of the elementary education K through six. And so I wanna let you know the big concepts, kind of the test secrets we've found so you can be successful too. So keep watching. So for the mathematics subtest of the K through six, you're gonna have 70 minutes to complete 50 multiple choice questions. And the test can really be neatly divided into five sections. Student thinking and instructional practices, number concepts, operations, and algebraic thinking, fractions, ratios, and integers, measurement, data, and statistics, and geometry. So let's get started with student thinking and instructional practices. So this section is gonna test you on how students think about math, how well you understand students think about math, and how you should teach math, or really the best practices of mathematical instruction. And this section makes up 26% of the test, so it's a super important section. And the three big concepts you need to know in this section are major theories of learning, teaching strategies, and assessments. So the first big concept to know is the major theories of learning and how they can be applied to mathematics. Now there's a lot of theories about how students learn, but on the test we can really be specific about four of them. And they are behaviorism, constructivism, social learning, sociocultural learning. And if you want to get really specific, which we do, look at Piaget's theory of cognitive development, Bloom's taxonomy, and the levels of geometric thinking. Be sure you know what these are and how they can be applied to mathematics. And if you're really a go-getter, we recommend reading over Florida's Standards of Mathematical Instruction. You can find it in the link below in the description. Now those are the learning theories to be familiar with, and you can look on those on Wikipedia or get a 240 tutoring study guide to get it broken down in the exact context that you need. Now the next big concept to know is teaching strategies. Now teaching strategies is really the best practices of teaching mathematics. Now the NCTM, the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics, has developed a great publication that go over some of the best practices. That's also a link in the description below. But also at a more pragmatic level, make sure you understand how to use key manipulatives especially manipulatives in an elementary classroom. Now, a manipulative is simply some sort of concrete or textile object that students can use to learn an abstract concept. And some great manipulatives are geo boards, pattern blocks, number lines, base 10 blocks, and 10 grams. And finally, the last big concept to know in the student thinking and instructional practices is really how to assess students. And there's three ways you can assess students. There's diagnostic assessments, there's formative assessments, and there's just kind of an ongoing gradual monitoring of a student's progress. Now just providing the assessment is enough. You also need to know how to use the data to impact curriculum and instructional planning. Now those are the three big concepts, but I wanna give you a few specific concepts that really help support and might give a little bit more clarity to those bigger concepts. So look at let's look at a few specific concepts. Problem solving structures is one. Problem solving is just really how students approach a problem and decide to solve it. Now this is extremely critical in all areas of learning, including mathematics. Now there's a particular problem solving mo model called Polya's model, and it follows four basic steps. Those steps are understand the problem, devise a plan, carry out the plan, review, confirm, and extend your hypothesis and findings. Now, there's a lot of problem-solving concepts and frameworks out there, but they all kind of follow Polya's model. So in the context of mathematics, make sure that you can help students understand a problem, devise a plan to solve the problem, carry out the plan, and then review, edit, revise, extend those results. The next very specific concept is math fluency. And math fluency is just a really fancy way of how quickly or how comfortable are your students with mathematical concepts? And there's kind of four big ones. And they're accuracy, automaticity, rate, and flexibility. Accuracy is simply solving a problem with the best approach. Automaticity is knowing the answer to the problem right away. Think two plus two, two times two, three times three. It's just memorizing very basic computations the student's gonna have to know. Rate is all about being efficient. Can a student complete X amount of problems in Y amount of time, and is this suitable for the grade level in which they're in? And finally, flexibility, it means you're comfortable using more than one approach to solve a problem. 
Now this is a little bit different than accuracy, which is essentially choosing the best method. Flexibility, since there's multiple ways to solve a math problem, means knowing which one and being comfortable with which way to solve a problem, really to identify the best method. Now let's move on to the next section number concepts, operations, and algebraic thinking. This concept is all about working with numbers, manipulating numbers, and how well you know algebra. Now, this section is gonna take up 28% of, of the test, so it's a huge section to be familiar with. So here are some specific concepts to know. And in the last section, I gave you three big concepts and then went into specific concepts. Here, I'm gonna start off with the specific concepts because they're very important and there's just a lot of information to know. Now, I'm gonna list off a whole bunch of properties of mathematics that you really need to know because they're very foundational and they're likely to come up on the test. So I'm gonna put them up on the screen and I'd recommend you pause the video and write them down. You can take a screenshot. Just make sure that you're familiar with all these properties so you can research them. Commutative property of addition, commutative property of multiplication, associative property of addition, associative property of multiplication, the distributive property, additive identity property, additive inverse property, multiplicative identity property, multiplicative inverse property. Now, that's a lot to know, and really understanding how it's gonna come on, up on the test is important. And for the most robust resource, I'd recommend a 242 during study guide because it's gonna break all those down, give you examples, and give you real life authentic questions about how they will appear on the test. Just a tip, Wikipedia can work as well, but it's not gonna contextualize it for your exam. That's just a tip. You can use Wikipedia, but it won't be contextualized for your test. The next concept to know is solving for x. Now this is very straightforward, but you'll see it in a variety of ways. Basically the test will give you an equation and then you have to solve for x. So the test might give you something like 4x squared minus four parentheses, three plus two, close parentheses, equals 16. And in this equation, you just need to balance the equation to isolate x. So you'll go through a progression and it'll generally look like this. 4x squared minus four times five, four parentheses five, equals 16. 4x squared minus 20 equals 16. 4x squared equals 36, because we added 20 to both sides. x squared equals nine, because we divided four by both sides. And then we took the square root of nine, x equals three. Now, if you're not familiar with how to break that down, I would really recommend getting a 242 during study guide because it's going to come up on the test and our study materials can give you lots of explanations about how to do it and practice questions to practice. And the next concept's going to come up, so you have to pay attention to this one. So I really want you to turn your phone off, turn it upside down, close out all the other tabs, focus on this concept. It will come up on the test. And that concept is the order of operations, PEMDAS. P-E-M-D-A-S. Now, the order of operations is just the order in which the operation must be solved, and there's different aspects to an equation. And PEMDAS is just an acronym that helps you remember which functions to perform first. You've got parentheses, then exponents, then multiplication, division, and then addition, subtraction. If you don't understand order of operations, you probably won't pass the test. That's why I had you really focus in. If you don't understand order of operations, then you have to study because it will be on the test and it will make or break your success. Now the last section we're gonna look at for the number concepts, operations, and algebraic thinking is number concepts. And really number concepts is just different concepts around numbers. So I'm gonna list off a few and you need to know what each of these means and how they relate to elementary level mathematics. Prime, composite, parity, multiples, factors, rules of divisibility. Now, I can almost guarantee four out of those terms will appear on the test. I just can't tell you which four. So let's move on to the next big concepts, fractions, ratios, and integers. And this section is really just gonna test your ability of how you can solve word problems and equations with fractions, integers, and ratios. So there's really three concepts in this section that you have to be familiar with. The first is what an in integer is and what the value of an integer is. You need to be able to know the value of a regular and sometimes irregular integers. Now, this will be on the test, stamped it, guaranteed, you have my word, you will see this question on the test, it's going to be on there. You're gonna be given a data set of somewhere between five and eight integers. And the integers will be in different form. You'll probably have the value of pi, you'll probably have a square root, you'll probably have some sort of fraction, maybe a negative or an irregular fraction, and then you'll have maybe two or three basic integers, negative 0.78 and three and five. Now the test will take you to take this data set 
and order the value of the integers from greatest to least or least to greatest. Each of the integers you're gonna have to place it accurately in the order from greatest to least or least to greatest. And if just knowing that that's gonna be on the test and that helps you prepare and that causes you to pass, leave a comment below and say, hey, thanks for helping me pass my test. I'd love to see it. So the next concept you're gonna see in this section is manipulating fractions. And you'll basically be asked to either add, subtract, multiply, or divide a set of fractions. So I'm gonna give you a few concepts or words to know and you need to know how they relate to fractions and how to use them. Reciprocal, mixed whole number, simplify, like simplify a fraction, numerator and denominator. So make sure you're familiar with fractions. Now, the last thing that's really gonna be on here is word problem. Word problems essentially gives you a prompt, some sort of story or narrative that has some sort of mathematical foundation to it. And you're gonna to have to know how to read the prompt, figure or translate that prompt into a mathematical problem, and then solve the problem. You know, common word problems are, Billy left his house and walked three blocks west and four blocks north. If Billy just walked straight, how many less blocks would Billy have walked if he walked a straight line than three blocks west and four blocks north? Now it can seem very easy, but you need practice with this. So my biggest recommendation would just be work through multiple authentic questions from the test. You can look at the test provider or again, a 242 during study guide. So let's move on to measurement, data, and statistics. This section really just involves knowing how to measure certain mathematical things, using sets of data, and understanding statistics. Now, this makes up 16% of the test, and there's a few concepts that are likely to appear in this section. Now, the first concept we have will come up on the test, just like order of operations, just like a word problem, just like sorting the value of integers, this will be on the test, so focus up. And that concept's central tendency measurements. Now, don't get too scared. Central tendency measurements, just four basic concepts. Mode, median, mean, and range. Now, make sure you know what those are. It just all deals with different ways to measure the center point of a data set. So you'll be given a data set of 10, 12 numbers, and you will be asked to find one of those four, if not all four. The next concept is gonna be measurement units, because there's measurement in the title of the section. And measurement really comes down to two things, being able to estimate and being familiar with different units of measurement. And by different units of measurement, I mean things like temperature, time, money, mass, weight, volume, speed, and percentages. And just like with pre previous concepts, while this isn't necessarily complex, we do recommend you get lots of practice working with these types of problems so you know what to expect and you don't get any curveballs thrown your way. And the last concept in this section is interpreting statistical models. And when you're interpreting statistical models at the elementary level, it's gonna deal with two things, standard deviation or quartiles. And usually the test will present some sort of a set of student scores and ask you about a different quartile or the standard deviation based on those students' scores. So make sure given a set of student scores, you understand this concept of standard deviation or quartiles and how student scores fall in those. And the last section covers geometry. Now, while it might only cover 12% of the test, the concepts are very specific in what they'll ask, so these concepts I'm about to cover are very important. The first concept is the Pythagorean theorem. And this is just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And it's how to find the length of any one side of a right triangle if you know the other two sides. Earlier in the video, when I talked about the word problem and Billy going three blocks west and four blocks north, you would use the Pythagorean theorem to solve that word problem. And just so you know, every test form I've seen for the mathematics of the K through six has Pythagorean theorem on it. So I think that's about the fifth concept I've given you that will be on the test. The next aspect of geometry is types of triangles. And there's really four types of triangles that you need to know for the test. And when I say no for the test, you need to know their basic characteristics and what makes this particular triangle this particular triangle. You got right triangles, isosceles triangles, equilateral triangles, and scaling triangles. So make sure you know what those are and what they look like and what makes each tri triangle specific and unique. And, and the last concept for geometry is three-dimensional shapes. So you need to be able to identify the three-dimensional properties of figures like a sphere, a cube, a rectangular prism, a cone, a cylinder, a pyramid, and probably a few more. Just make sure you're comfortable with basic geometric three-dimensional figures. And when I say comfortable, you know how many edges each one has, you know how to find the volume, you know how to find the surface area, and general basic functions that you'd find at a third, fourth, or fifth grade classroom. Now, if this seems like a lot of information, it's because it is. It's a big test that can cover a whole lot. So if you're freaking out about how you're gonna learn all this and study it and work with practice questions and are you gonna make flashcards, don't worry. 
We've already done the hard work at 242 during figuring out what's on the test, what material you need to know, and creating wonderful, authentic practice questions, flashcards, and instructional content. So instead of freaking out, just go to 242tutoring.com, find the K-6 through Mathematics Subtest Study Guide, and get studying today to make sure you can pass the test you need on the first time. Oh, did I mention that it comes with a 48 hour no questions asked refund policy and the 242 tutoring guarantee? So if you score a 90% on our practice test but fail the exam, you get your money back? Something to think about. Now, I'm gonna give you a few practice questions straight from the 242 tutoring study guide so you can see how a few of these concepts might show up on the test. Any town school district provides 50 multiple choice question mathematics assessments to all fourth grade students. The students complete the assessment, the tests are scored, and the scores are compared throughout the school district. Which of the following mathematics components is most likely the goal of this type of assessment? Accuracy, rate, automaticity, flexibility. Now, with all these questions, make sure to pause. You can review the prompt, review the answer options. I'm gonna give you the correct answer and why it's the correct answer. The correct answer is A. The assessment most likely is designed to measure the student's accuracy of answering questions. Question two. There are five children in the Drake family. The oldest children are 12-year-old twins, and the youngest child is four years old. If the sum of all the children's ages is 47, what could be the ages of the other two Drake children? Eight and 11 years old, nine years old, three and six years old, seven and 11 years old. The correct answer is A. The sum of the ages of the children is 47. The twins are 12, so 2 times 12 is 24, and the youngest child is 4 years old. So for these three children, we have 24 plus 4 equals 28, which leaves 19 is the difference between 28 and 47. So 19 is the sum for the ages of the two remaining children. The only choice of that sum of 19 is 8 and 11, choice A. Which of the following is an example of the commutative property of multiplication? Now, I'm not going to say all these because I would butcher it, so I'm just gonna place them on the screen and then give you the correct answer. A, B, C, or D? The correct answer is C. The commutative property of multiplication states that it does not matter the order of the multiplication sequence, the answer will be the same. This can be represented by the equation A times B equal times C equals C times B times A. Question four. Which of the following correctly combines like terms for the following equation? A, B, C, or D? The correct answer is A. This is the only answer option that combines the terms correctly. In question five, this deals with central tendency measurement. What is the median and mean of the data set below? A, median 3.5, mean 5. B, median 4.5, mean 5. C, median 4.5, mean 4.5. D, median 7, mean 5. The correct answer is B. Remember that before you can find the median, the data must be arranged in order from least to greatest or greatest to least. Then the median is simply the middle term. In this set, there's 20 terms, so the middle of the two terms is 4 and 5. Thus, the median is the average of the two, which is 4.5. The mean is the sum of all the numbers in the data set divided by 20, because there's 20 numbers in the data set, and all the numbers added up equals 101. So 101 divided by 20 is 5.02. The mean is about five. The mean is written as 5.0 because the value has been rounded to the nearest tenth. Writing the mean as five would indicate that its exact whole number is five. Now we have literally hundreds and hundreds of practice questions just like this in our study guides as well as free sample material on our website. So visit 242tutoring.com to get all the preparation you need for the elementary education K-6 through mathematics subtest. If you like the video, subscribe to us, put on your notification bell. If you have any comments, just leave them below. We read and respond to every single one. And be sure to watch our other videos about the K-6 through exam.